So this mimer, <coughs> this mimer lechod doidi likaskala, you know, is recited <coughs> by a, a lebavitcher chosin. A chosin was a lebavitcher. Usually recites this at their um, tnoim uh, before the wedding. To, this is from the Friedeke Rebbe. Uh, there's also a Maimah that Rebbe said in 1954, 53, um, on this, with the same opening, Blecha Doidil Kaskalop, Ne Shabbos de Kablo, excuse me, um, that some Hasanim say either that Maimah instead of this Maimah, or they say both Maimorim. When I was a Hasan, I said this Maimah. So let's uh, begin on top of 148 and read what it says so you get a background. But what year was this said? 1928. Yud Dalit Kislev, next week in Yitz Hashem. Um, I, ho I hope to be teaching you next week from Poland and then Russia. I've already made, okay. uh, made arrangements to have Wi-Fi in Yitz Hashem. Hashem should help that it should all work. So uh, I will be, I will be uh, in Poland, in Warsaw, uh, two days uh, before the Rebbe's wedding, uh, Sunday through Tuesday, and on one of those days in 28, it was it was Shabbos, it was Shabbos, right? It was it was a Shabbos, and this mimer was said, I believe, Shabbos parshas vayetze, and then repeated again uh, Tuesday uh, Tuesday night. At, uh, okay, let's learn. And so it said like this: before the mimer, I want to read the the opening paragraph. Because this is relevant to all of us. Terem posach es adrush lechod doidi bulam ayeshiva toim chet mimim beeisa kabolus ponim. Before uh, he began saying the maim lechod doidi in the yeshiva toim chet mimim during uh, the kabolus ponim. In other words, this maim was not said by the rebbe. It was said by the previous rebbe at the we rebbe's wedding. Omar I mean, at, the, at, at the seventh rebbe's the at the wedding. seventh rebbe's wedding, the previous rebbe, the father-in-law, said this mimer. <coughs> so before he began, Omar kveit kushes admur bezel The Friedrich rebbe said with the following words: "Yodua mufursim." It's known and publicized. Asher be'ei simchas nisuin during the time of a wedding on nisuin. In Yiddish, Kumen Nishmas Ha'avos Min Ha'elam Ha'emes The souls of the patriarchs, the Avos, come from the world of truth. Biz Gimel Doira Yislim Afreya is Bechol Yisrael. Going back three generations, they come up to three generations for all Yidin. Umfaran Vos Mer Umer And then there are by some people that it goes even back further, <coughs> more generations, more than three generations, come, meru mer, more and more. What's in them is madregis shoinus. There are, <coughs> excuse me, there are different levels of, <coughs> of people, <coughs> excuse me, people experiencing, uh, you know, more generations coming. He doesn't specify, he just says a general rule. Now he says, Uvuturas mono unishmas hatzadikim. By the way, when he says ovos, nishmas ovos, I said patriarchs. I meant, I meant to say one's parents, grandparents, and great grandparents. He doesn't mean here, you know, Avram Yitzchak Yaakov. Maybe he means that too, but the pashtus, it means our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents. Uvaturas mono l'nishmas atzadikim hoy kveit kedushas abiseinu rabiseinu kedushim, and I within the invitation hasmana, I I invite the souls of the tzadikim, the holy fathers, the holy rebbe's, asher yevoy al chupa, they should come to this chupa, ulavorech asazuk, and they should bless the couple. That means the rebbe and the rebbe's and the previous rebbe's daughter, rebbe tzimchay mushka. His second daughter, he had three daughters. He had no sons, only girls. That men eats reiden achsidis. That's in Yiddish. We will now talk a chasidis. That was a that that was an expression in Chabad 
when uh, when uh, when someone, uh, especially a Rebbe, would say a mimer, they wouldn't say say a mimer. That's uh, or even in Yiddish zog a mimer. In in old in old uh, uh, tradition of of Chabad in, in Russia, it was reiden a Hasidus. Reiden speak a Hasidus, which means a mimer Hasidus. Okay. For Sachelik is from Alten Rebbe. The, Rebbe, the previous Rebbe says that the Maimah I'm going to say, part of it is based on the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe. Achelik from Mittler Rebbe. Another part from the Middle Rebbe. Achelik from Elter Zayden. Another part from the Great Grandfather. Achelik from Zayden, the Elter Zayden Shalakala. A part, a, 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 a part of the Maimah is uh, the Grandfather the great grandfather of the Kala, a chelik from Elter, Elter Zeidu Shalachosen. Another part is based on the, the great great grandfather of the Chosen, a chelik from Tatendem Kala Zeide. And then he says, a part of it is my father, that means the Rebbe Rashab of Sholem Ber, who's the Kala's grandfather. And then he concludes, so he, to, he tells us who the Mimer. It incorporates and includes and who it's based on, all these different Sadiqim's words. And then he quotes the Chazal, whoever says something over in the name of that person, it's as though he, the Balashmua, he, he sees the Balashmua, the one who he is repeating from, stands right in front of him. This, um, these were the words of the introduction to the mimer, the publisher. So this, the publisher of the mimer uh, quoted these words that were said actually in 1928. And now to the mimer itself. To the help of Hashem. Come my beloved towards the kala, towards the bride. Pnei Shabbos, the face of Shabbos, Nikablo, let us receive. Everyone say, sings and says this every Friday night. Vihine ha Shabbos, Nikreis Kalo, Vinikreis Malka. Shabbos is called the Kalo, and, it's, and Shabbos is also called the Queen, the Malka. Ukamaimer, Shabbos Malkasa. Shabbos the Malkasa. Vihine, so, 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 so what's the issue? So he, so he says, why is it? He, he doesn't say it, but this is what he implies. He's asking, why do we have two names for Shabbos? Why is Shabbos called Kala? And why is Shabbos also called Malka, so Malka, the queen? A, a groom and a bride... Chosen and Kala, the Chosen is called the king. It says in Pirkei Drebeloza, chapter 15, Chosen dey melech. A Chosen is compared to a king. Vahakala and the, and the bride, Nikras, Malka, she's called the queen. So he says that we're not making this stuff up. Pirkei Drebeloza already tells us clearly, Chosen dey melech, Vahakala, Nikras, Malka. If it says in Bereshis, Nasa Adam, let us make man bitzalmenu in our image, kidmuseinu in our form. The Adam shilamato who bitzalem utmus Adam ha'elyon. Man below is made in the image and the form of man above. Who is this Adam ha'elyon? Who is this man above? Shehem svira shalyonis. Man of Ab refers, refers specifically to the supernal Svirot, which are from Chabad to Malchus, right? Chabad, Chagas, Chabad, Chochba, Bin Adas, the first set of three, Chagas, Chesed, Gevur, Tiferes, the second set of three, Nehi, Netzach, Hod, Yisod, the third set, and Malchus, the number ten. So he says, man below is in the image and form of man above, which are the ten spheros. In other words, in every one of us, there are the ten spheros. The Zeir Ampin, going on to page 149 now. The Zeir Ampin, the Atsilus, Nikre Malka. Zeir Ampin means the small faces, okay? It's, it's Aramaic. Zeir means little, uh, Ampin is upon the faces. The, the small faces of Atsilus, 
Nikra Malka are called the Malka. Now, what, what does it mean just for a moment, the small faces of Atsilos? There are, and you can hear this, guys, there are, there are four worlds. Atsilos, Bria, Yitzira, Asiya. The acronym is Abaya. Aleph, Beis, Yud, Ayin. Atsilos begins with an Aleph, Bria with a Beis, Yitzira with a Yud, Asiya with a Ayin. Abaya. So, the, the first of the four worlds is called Atsilos. Uh, two of you, what does Atsilos mean? Close. It comes from the word eight cell, near. Why is it called Atsilos? Because it's near what's called the Ein Sof, the Or Ein Sof, the infinite light of Hashem. Bria, the second world, is already the beginning of the Gashmi's Dika world in its earlier stage. So it's not as close to the Ein Sof. So we don't call that Atsilos. Atsilos is the first world. So the, uh, in the first world, there are ten spheros. Excuse me. In every single world, there are ten spheros. What he says here is that when, that when we're talking about man below is made in the image of man above, he says it's the, the, it, it, it's the Malka. What is the queen part of? Of this of man above, what does that spiritually, metaphysically mean? It means the midos zein ampin, the midos, the small map of Atsilus. Let me explain. You have a map. In a map, you, you're not, you don't, you, you don't know where uh, uh, Amik Rifaim is. You don't know where uh, Rechov Hamor is. It's on the map. You look on the map. So on the map, it's in in, in a very small written form, and it's just giving directions. It's not the real thing yet. So he says, Zeir Ampin Atsilus we call the Malka because it's the formation of what will be in the future as far as the Malka is concerned, the Queen is concerned. But right now, in the world of Atsilus, being that Atsilus is so close to the Godhead, i.e. Ein Sof, Hashem, the infinite God. Therefore, it's only in a Zeir Ampin, in a small way. Okay, let's go further. The Indian, as explained elsewhere, it's explained regarding the idea of the Cho Nishmasa, Nishmasa, we're going to read now some Aramaic. Every single Nishama, it doesn't say the Cho Nishama, Nishama, Nishmata, which is Aramaic. Every, with an Aleph at the end, that makes it Aramaic. Every soul, Nishmata, every soul, Havet Kaimam was standing Bidiyakna in its form, Kame Malka Kadisha before the holy Melech, right? Shehu Zeirampin Datsilus, which is Zeirampin of Atsilus. Before I, it's Malka over here means the Melech. In this context, it means the Melech. Usfiras Amalchus. What about. The tenth sphera. By the way, Zeir Ampin Yehuda refers to the six middos, Hagas and, uh, and Nehi, not Chabad. Chabad is a separate equation. So you have the six middos. Then you have. Then guess what you have after that? You have Malchus. So he says Malchus is the kingship, right? The royalty. Uh, that he says is um, uh, Nikas Malchus. So Malchus. Is called the queen. The idea of reigning and leadership and authority is identified as the queen. That's why the expression is the woman wears the excuse the expression the pants in the in the in, in the house in the family, right? Because of the malchus, and when we guys know that we could think otherwise with so macho, but we know that the wife is the keres abayas, and the way she establishes the home. That's the way it is, and that's why it's so, so important to, to pick the right wife. And for your children, and for your children and your grandchildren, remember that your children and grandchildren, 99% of the time, are going to turn out the way your wife, uh, the, the way she establishes the home. That's the fact. You know, that we, we're running around making parnosa, or we're learning, you know, we're all over the place. But the, the mother, the, the, the Malkisa, the queen, she is, is a keras abayas, it's called the Iker of the house. So here in Kabbalistic terms, we have the same idea. The idea you see over here how everything in, in Gashmias has a reflective, corresponding aspect 
in the spiritual realms. So he says that Malchus is called the Malkisa, the queen. And it says in Zayar, the Malka Belay Matronisa Lavi Melech Lavi Godl. Okay. Shmuel, what's a Matronisa? Crown. The ma it's like the word English word matron. Right. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. The matron. The Malka Belay Matronisa, the Melech without the matron. Love you, Melech. He is not a king. The love you, Godel, and he's not great. You know, you could be a great rabbi, but if you don't have congregants or congregants don't like you, you ain't no great rabbi. You can be a great rav and a great rebbe and a great teacher and a great professor, but if you have no students and you're talking to the wall, you're talking at the end of the day to the wall. Why? Because you need matronisa. You need a matron. You need someone who says, who, who walks you to the chuppah, who supports you under your arm, walking you to the chuppah, who says, I believe in you. You're my man. You're the right person. That's a matronisa. The main thing is the yichud, the unity of the eir ampin, of the middles, the nukva, and the feminine, i.e. malchus. What needs to be accomplished, guys, is unity. On every level, there needs to be unity. So on high, we need to bring together the energy of Hashem, that is Midos, together with the energy of Hashem, that's Malchus. Why? Because Malchus, Yoni, is really thinking about creating for the future, right? The woman creates the child. Ze'er Ampin, the Midos, are still associated with up what's above them, Chabad, the Ein Sof. So the Midos are still under the uh, control of what's above them. So if, if you only have the Midos of Atsilus and you don't have Malchus of Atsilus, you, you won't create a, you won't create a, 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 a future. That's why you must have unity. So let's look inside. Very important. So he says, the Ikir who Yichud Zeirampin Venukva. The main thing is to unite the small faces, i.e., the middles, and Nukva and Malchus. The Ksiv, Ksiv, Zochar Nukeva Baroisim. It says in the Torah, Hashem created male and female. Vayavorachoisim Alekim. And Hashem blessed them. What's, what's the, what's the, what's, why is he bringing the verse, Hillel? He quote, wait, just to bring the verse? Look at the shot in the verse. It comes a continuation to what he said here. Why did Hashem bless them? Laser, why by Kim? Because because Hashem created the ability for there to be unity between male and female. If not for the unity of male and female on high, i.e., Malchus and the Midos, there wouldn't be a bracha. Practically speaking, too. Only through the unity of the male and the female do we have a Yivorech In other words, there needs to be a keili for the bracha. A keili for the bracha. You can have a great male, one second, and you can have a great female. But if there is no un unity between the male and the female, everyone knows Shechina Shri B'nei and Ish V'isha, the Yud and the K are the two letters of Ish V'isha, right? H how is that created, the Yud and the K? And, and the it's through the unity. And that's why, and that's why Yivorech Hosem Alekim. So that's why the Rebbe brings to this Pusik after he makes his point that spiritually speaking, from on high on, the main thing is the Yichud, the Ho'ikr, look at his language, the Ho'ikr who, Yichud Zeir Ampin Venukva, the unity of Zeir, of the Midos and Malchus, and then Uksiv, he doesn't say, Velochen Ksiv, Uksiv, and it says, because then the bracha comes. And it's a tremendous lesson, this, and I'll take your question in a second. It's a tremendous lesson in and of itself that, that without the yichud, there, there lacks blessing. You hear that? You can live in the same house, and you can have kids. There has to be the yichud. It's a very important point. Not just physically, but spiritually, there has to be an identification, an achdus, 
between male and female, between Midos and Malchus, to create the bracha. And the same is within yourself. If a person hasn't found a unity in himself, and, he, and he's a type of a Malchus person, you know, authority and royalty and regality and entrepreneurship and all that, it's gewaldic, yeah? Because it's going to make, it's going to create a, a next step. But if, if that person is lacking the Midos, lacking the, the feminine, I'm uh, sorry, lacking the masculine, Right, in this case I'm talking about feminine being the creator for the future and masculine being the middles, right? So if, if, if they're missing that, there's not going to be a vayavorech, a blessing. Yes, uh, Hillel. Yeah, Hillel, no, I just want to oh. know, what's the Zeir Ampin? What is the Zeir Ampin again? Zeir Ampin, it, it, it's Aramaic, it literally means small, Zeir means small, Ampin faces. So the oh, couple... Okay, so the what? The, the proven were the babies' faces. The proven were babies' faces. And it was only when the Kali Yisrael was Mishalloin, then they were Mishyachim. And that's when the Shrin was Shorabeinenu. And when Kali Yisrael had no hump, but was fighting with each other, then the Rabbanisham was not happy with Kali so then there was fewer babies thereafter. So maybe you could say that the proven or the settled physically of the Zerampin in, 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 in the physical belt. And, and and I believe what you're saying, I, not I believe, it says it says that in Chassidus. It says that when the Kruv, it's, I mean, it's brought down from a Medish, but Chassidus emphasizes that the, that the Kruvim were facing each other, and when there was Sholem, I think they faced each other. Shmuel, doesn't it say somewhere? And when there was, there was, yeah. uh, there, there was no harmony, they, they, they looked the other way from each other, right? Yeah, so well, that's I'm the... Saying, there aren't they, could be the physical manifestation of there aren't in Oilam Hazer, the yeah, something something rings in my head, Shmuel. Do you remember something rings in my head that it says? I I, I remember learning something like that, but I can't place it. I have to. I I, I remember an association between Zer Ampin and the Kruvim. What? But we <laughs> but we we say we say. <laughs> Right? Exactly. Yeah. By the way, that we do say, uh, just for the record, laser, we do say that. <laughs> <laughs> that there's still hope for Chabad. We do say that. Okay, let's go further. So Rebbe says now, therefore, just as Shabbos, that it's necessary to receive Shabbos with true Simcha. Right? True Simcha. Not false Simcha. Not, you know, Fashnuskin uh, before Shabbos or taking a few puffs, you know, to get high. We're talking about true Simcha, like the Arizal. Went out and he would have besimcha. So he's in a kedugma. Shabbos it's nichem lekabli besimcha. Just as Shabbos is necessary for for us to receive Shabbos besimcha, the Shabbos iu mekayda the chol bekayni loim v'tatoyim. Shabbos is called the source of all brachas, supernal and and lower, upper and lower. Shabbos is the is the mucker of all brachas. The kula yaimim is baruchim as Shabbos. All days are blessed for Shabbos. He nikamai came tzrich lekabel pnei akalo. They are the same way. You have to be makabel the kala during the kabbalas ponim. The Reb is explaining here, guys, what the spiritual idea of a kabbalas ponim is. This is so important to know. People come to kabbalas ponim and they just talk and waste time. Listen to what's going on here. This is happening at every Kabbalah's Ponim. What's happening? You have to receive the Kala, just like you receive Shabbos with Simcha, at the same time, but during the Kabbalah's Ponim with Simcha. Why? Why must you receive the Kala this way? The Ihi Mikaira Birchasi La, before the Kala is the source of supernal blessing. That Kala, 
that's sitting over there, and the chassan's about to uh, to put the veil over her, and the kabbal is upon him, that kala is the source of bracha, and therefore receive her with joy. Now, it doesn't mean, you know, there, there are people that cry at the kabbal is upon him. It means with seriousness, we understand that this is something very significant. Vihine. Yeshoid maimazeh, the source, the foundation of this maimer, of this, of this saying. Which, which one? The l'kras kala p'nei shabbos kabla. Come, go, my beloved, and, and towards the kala. Receive the shabbos. So we see an association between the kala and shabbos. That's what we're saying. There's some kind of similarity. Shoim v'kabola shabbos. That we say Friday night at kabola shabbos. Who the Isa be Gemara? So he quotes a Gemara. Shabbos Kuf Yutes Aleph. What does it say? Rabchanina miatif. Rabchanina garbed himself with clothing. With Godem Noim Rashi says with nice he put on nice garments. Vekoi apanya the Malu Shabbato. And what did he do? And he and he stood. He was there before Shabbos, right? Erev Shabbos, right before Shabbos. Omar and he said, Bo, come. Venetze Likra Shabbos Amalka, let us go towards the Shabbos Queen. That's one Chazal. Rabyanai, Rabyanai, Levisha Mone, uh, he, he put on big the Shabbos, he put on his his, his Shabbos clothing, Mile Shabbos, Er Shabbos. The Oman he said, Boyichalo, Boyichalo. He said twice, boy, kala, come, kala, come, kala. Why? Hochi korilol shvisa Shabbos b'toy chavivos, because he loved Shabbos so much. He loved the rest, the shvisa of Shabbos, as this is from Rashi. Therefore, he didn't just say come. It's like he said, come, please, come, please. I love you. I want you, chavivos. He doesn't just say it once. He says it twice. So we have two quotes from the Gemara. Now comes along the Zoya, Chele Gimel Dafa Mura Ayin Reisha Im Beis Om and Beis Isa. What is saying the Gemara? Over Shabbos, the the Chol Miloi Tzorich Li Toisva Mechayel Kodesh. On Shabbos, we have to in every aspect we have to fill up Shabbos. We have to increase Tosefta Mechayel from the weekday Al Kodesh. How, baby, my Chol of whether it be with foods. Make more good foods for Shabbos. Uve mishtav and drinks. Bein bilavushe, whether it be garments. Bein bilhazvose, whether it be with haseba, with leaning and reclining. The tzoruch, lisak de le misiba shapira, become a kodem. You know, in those days, they used to have like these couches, you know, like we on Cheros, you know, uh, Pesach. So every Shabbos, they had this uh, couch where you would sit back like a recliner, and it was so gishmak, and you would sit there. So the Gemara the Zerah says you had to prepare it. Mesiba Shapira become a korim. You had to add the kustois blankets and pillows. Marakma mikol the isba woven from everything you had in your house. The best five uh, uh, threads. Commander Sakin Kala. Just like your masakin, a chupa for the kala, you want it to be a gorgeous chupa, not a shmata. Right? You want to stand under a beautiful chupa. So every single Friday night before Shabbos, you prepare your, 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 your Shabbos by making extra food and extra drinks and extra clothing and an extra nice, um, blankets and pillows for the, for that when you sit by the suit of Shabbos, it'll be geschmack. It'll be beautiful. The shops are ir malkus of ir kala, and the Zohar says Shabbos is the queen, the ir kala, and is also the kala, the bride. Next page, top of one fifty. The high Yeah. So you mentioned about Rabbi Yana, who would say boy kala, boy kala. Yeah. He said that the last stand there, he said Shabbos malkus, but he said quietly. I didn't say it out loud. Why is that? Uh, <laughs> I think, I think, it's, uh, don't, uh, don't quote me, but I think because you want to, you want to be magish, the, the kala, the, we're going to learn soon, Shmuel, there's the two levels, kala, two, there's two levels, so I, I believe he wants to emphasize the level of kala versus the level of Shabbos, in other words, 
until now he's saying there's a similarity between the two, but nevertheless, one is Kala and one is Shabbos. And I think he wants to be Madgish Kala. Let's see if we'll understand that from the Hemshech HaMaimer. I'm not sure we will, but let's see. But I think that might be a reason. Do you know? Have you read anything else? Anyone know? Uh, Pinchas, Herav Pinchas, wake him up. Isn't that... Uh-huh. Okay, weiter. <laughs> Kabbalah, you know, it's, that's a good, it's a good excuse. It's Kabbalah. We don't have to understand it. In Chabad, if there's a piece of Kabbalah brought in a mimer or brought in the Siddur, we try to understand it. It reminds me, <clears throat> a, a Chassid, uh, who's a, a Chernobyl Chassid, a, uh, what's it called, Kleisenberg Chassid, um, he asked, he says, I want to learn Chassidus with you. Here in Borough Park, years ago. So I said, sure. But he said, I don't want to learn Tanya. I don't want to learn Tanya. I said, no problem. I'll learn whatever you want to learn. I said, whatever you want to learn. So he picked Teferis Shloma from the holy Radomsk Rebbe. Radomsk was a Hasidus in Poland. Big, big Hasidim and a big Rabbist of Nebuch, they were all wiped out. So the, 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 the Rebbe was a Rabbi Shloma, and he wrote a sefer called the, the, Teferis Shloma. He has an Enochol who lives here in Ramapichemesh. Yeah? He lives in Famous into a very sweet guy, young guy, sweet guy. Yeah. And, okay, Yashikoy. I mean, what he, he, and, and he became and he became a rebbe. He, he made himself a rabbi in, in Ramat Ramat He's not. He's not a rebbe. Uh, right, right. Okay. Anyway, so so I, he says, I, I don't want to. I want to learn. A, I said, no problem. Whatever you want to learn, see this. We'll learn together. We sat down. We open up and we start learning something. He after two lines, there's some kabbalah. He says. I was taught in yeshiva, when you come to the Kabbalah part in, in Hasidus, you skip it. Okay, we skipped the first two, you know, I don't want to argue with him, you know, but barely the guy is agreeable to learn some Hasidus, so let, let him. We go three lines later, there's more Kabbalah, we have to skip this, and basically most of the page was Kabbalah, we ended up skipping it. I told him afterwards, I'd love to learn with you, I can't. I mean, you know, he, he wasn't even interested, I, I wanted to try to understand the Kabbalah and explain and talk it out and see if we can make some headway. But it was like completely not interested because he was taught yeshiva when it comes to a line of Kabbalah, it's Kabbalah. And if you understand Torah Sabal Shem Tov, I'm sorry to say, it's totally opposite of that. The Baal Shem Tov took Kabbalistic idea, ideas and he actualized it, and he, and, and he gave it Seichel. Now, the Alter Rebbe, Chabad, really, you know, builds with Mosholim and examples, that, but even not Chabad, ha, Ger. You, th you think the Ger Rebbe skipped over a piece of Kabbalah that they were learning or they were writing about? Of course not. Now, with them, not every average person was able to understand it. So, in Chabad, we, 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 we teach that we have to understand it and not skip it over. So, anyway, let's go further here. V'hainu... Shame, top of 150. is just a Shabbos. Is the source of all Brochis. He and So too, the Simch of Chosen Vakala and the Kabbalah's Pneim receiving their face, i.e., the Kabbalah's Ponim, who Makaira Brochis. Now you'll notice that he's focusing here on the Kabbalah's Ponim. We're not right now talking about the Chupa, we're talking about Kabbalah's Pneim at the Kabbalah's Ponim. The Nixiv, I'll call Kavod Chupa. On all honor, there's Chupa. Shehem, Shtei Pchinas. There's two Pchinas. Kavod Chosen, the Kavod Kala. The honor of the Chosen, the honor of the Kala. The Chosen, the Kodesh Baruch The Chosen is Hashem. Ukemaimer, Beyoim Chasun Nosai, Zub Matan Teira. The Chazal say, the day of the Chasana, this is the day Hashem gave the Teira. Shakodesh Baruch Hu Nikra Chosim. Hashem is called the Chosim, the groom. Uknes Yisrael, and we Yidin and Nikras Kala were called the bride. The Kavay to Pinas Makiv. Honor is Makiv, right? Intellect and emotions are in the heart or in the mind. What about Boaz honor? Honor is something that hovers over you. It's not that my mind has honor and not my heart. If you have honor, every part of your body has honor. You're honor an honorable person. So COVID, he says, is makiv, it encompasses. Kvait chosen, the honor of the chosen, what does that mean? Abbas HaKadosh Baruch it's the love that Hashem has for the Yidin. K'mesh Kosov, or hafti eschem omer Hashem, Hashem says, I love you. What's a kvait kala? What is the honor of the kala? Abbas Kness Yisrael HaKadosh Baruch it's the love of the Yidin for HaKadosh Baruch 
Ukumeshikosov, as it says in the verse, Nichviso, the Gam Kosanafshi. I have a yearning and my soul extinguishes for you. It ceases to be because it loves you so much. In other words, there's a, a, a deep love for, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu that Jews have, that Yidin have. So now we have like this. We have the covenant of the Chosen, Hashem loving us. We have us loving Hashem. And we go now under HaChupa. HaChupa, who are makif, Chupa is the general in, in conference al Chosen Vakala over the Chosen Vakala. So just as this is, in other words, something happens at a chupa that, it, that transcends what we have, what the chosen and kala have on their own. Through the coming together of the chosen and kala, they, they create a chupa. They go under the chupa means they create. Let's look further. Listen to the order. Most people, abundance of people, come to the Kabbalah's podem first. You have to be makabel the chosim, right? We go and we sit with the chosim at the Kabbalah's podem. We we greet the the groom. V'yachakach only afterwards hoyochet ima chosim. We walk together with the chosim lekabel pnei akala to receive the face of the kala. Number three. The chosen covers bitsoif with a veil as a kala the kala, and number four the hoyochim al chupa, and we go to the chupa. So we have four things. Who who thought the last time when I go to a kabbalah sponim that I'm doing these four things? One, I'm being the kabbal the chosen. Two, I'm going together. We are going together with the chosen to be the the kala. Number three, the, the chosen is soy covering the kala, and number four, we're going back to the chupa. We do it, but the Rebbe here is articulating four steps that are prominent and so and happening at the Kabbalah Sponim. And he goes further. The Indian who the idea is with the bechol alias hamekabel al mashpia so the alias tchila mshochas hamashpia bebchinas. Actually, we'll stop over here, but Inyan who could start a new idea, which I'll talk about next time in Mitzvah Shem. But right now, we are, we are at the part where the Rebbe will start explaining why there is these four stages. Why, why do we need that? In other words, why can't you go to the Chuppah right away and not have Kabbalah's Ponim? Why? So he's going to explain why, basically, you have to break it. You have to break in slowly. You can't do it all at once because it's overpowering. And then you can have an attack, and the chosen of the kala can run away from the chupa. He doesn't say those words, but I'm talking about the idea. In other words, when you have such an energy of kedusha, you have to take it slowly. It reminds me when the Rebbe and the Rebetzin came to America in, I believe, May or June of 1941. Um, they were, they, right, they were in the, the Holocaust, they were saved, they ran away, and they were saved, and they brought the 770. You would think that the previous Rebbe would want to see them right away. Guess what? He said he can't see them for three days. Ha! Huh. He, he didn't see them for three days. So, you know, that, that's a fact. That, that, that's not, the question is why. He never said why. I think, and others think it's a possibility, that emotionally, it was he, he needed to, he, he wanted to emotionally be healthy and not be overwhelmed by emotions. It shouldn't be just midos, it should be seichel alpi mid, uh, midos alpi seichel, moach shalot alalev, mind controlling the heart, so that the engagement, uh, a meeting between the previous Rebbe and the Rebbe and his wife, should be in a in a way that will that will will be permanent, and I I think if if I may say so that the idea is that because he saw the future you know, he saw he felt that this 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 gentleman this rebbe here his son-in-law and his daughter will will become the future leaders again you know when I say saw I mean to say he had a feeling a hergish the so it needed to be it needed to be directed in a very very disciplined way. 
So the, the fact is, he didn't see it for three days. Um, so why am I saying this? Because he's uh, over here. I, I mentioned the idea of the chosun and the kala, and you don't want to overwhelm. You don't want to overwhelm the the the, the chosun and the kala. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to Kabbalah's ponim. Kabbalah's ponim is a time when you solidify the the experience by by do, breaking in. Just a thought. Uh, anyway, Chaver uh, Zaygezunt. We'll see you, Mitzvah Shem. Hatzlocha. Take care. Yeah. Have a great day. Good day. Yeah.